Hello, hello, Uta Hagen of Trans Widow, Uta Hagen YouTube channel here, as well as um, the author of WordPress blog, Uta Hagen Grass Widow .wordpress.com. That is always in the video notes. Um, and I've got the orchid that doesn't stop giving here. I think I thought it was the last flower a while ago and it isn't I have a couple of buds and everything I think I actually have four more buds <laughs> and then of course I've got those daffodils that I dug up and potted to force inside now um, I've got to try to get through this I want you to know though that my latest WordPress blog of today is really the text of this and so if you want to see these quotes and to have them in the order that I'm presenting them here, along with a little bit of digressions into my own story as a trans widow, then um, you go to my WordPress blog. So um, yeah, okay. Thank you to this uh, creator of a website, theliestheytell.org, and that is linked in my WordPress blog of today. And the title is something like uh, Debbie Hayton's Waffle Recipes, something like that. Um, retcon Waffles. De Debbie Hayton's res Recipe for Retcon Waffles, something like that. <laughs> and I've noticed that there is this waffling now of some of the older so-called transsexuals who, like Miranda Yardley, like Debbie Hayton, like Katie John uh, Went, admit that they're men. Um, and I'll, most of them used to kind of stridently insist that they were women and they didn't think that they were imposing on women's rights or disrespecting women because they believed that their diagnosis is so rare and unusual. And I guess they are in shock about the social contagion and the um, increasing numbers of uh, males who identify as uh, being female in their head and wanting to change their body to match their feelings of the time. Uh, I also do want to give a shout out to um, Sam Kay, who used to go by the name Maya Kay and is now detransitioning. He recently had his breast implants taken out. And that is what I regard as true honesty. Uh, his uh, YouTube channel is Call Me Sam, and he his most recent uh, post that I think is poignant with um, just shows his developing uh, grace and wisdom for um, tr you know his efforts to undo what w w he was 20 years ago convinced to do and uh, he's so anyway that's linked also in my WordPress uh, post of today that's at the very end because I want to contrast his honesty in his detransition with the waffling. Um, I would say that Corinna Cohn is another bit of a waffler. I know that he admits he's a man. I know that he um, says that he was young and impressionable when he made this decision. Um, I still though do feel that really true honesty means that you need to say this is um, not a good idea for anyone. No one should start messing with their plumbing. No one should start uh, on this path of the Holy Grail to get the letters to go to the surgeons. So. Uh, uh, this um, contains a number of quotes from Debbie Hayton's new book and um, 
Uh, yes, and quotes from the London Times article about Debbie and Steph Stephanie Hayton and about the book from the London Times about, uh, I think it was published about two weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to start with Stephanie. I prefer to do that instead of um, Debbie David. What really upset me was Debbie only listened to her online friends who to Debbie repeatedly said, I had no say in our marriage and my only role was to go shopping with her for women's clothes. I will now read this with proper, um, actual, accurate pronouns. What really upset me was Debbie only listened to his online friends who to Debbie repeatedly repeat, said repeatedly, I had no say in our marriage and my only role was to go shopping with him for women's clothes. Um, I had uh, someone, the Ruth the Charlatan non-certified therapist of my ex, Nettie, say uh, this business about shopping. <laughs> I can't imagine because Nettie had expensive taste. I cannot imagine going shopping with Nettie. I never did it. Um, okay, so the, uh, there is this story about um, uh, Stephanie going to therapy during the time of Debbie's so-called transition and uh, she was so distraught and traumatized that she couldn't talk. And that is in the previous WordPress blog post uh, the link to the Stella O'Malley famous conversation where, where Stephanie's feelings are basically dismissed. And uh, then um, we go into this business about friends <laughs> on the internet. Uh, in the early days of the internet, which I mean seems to me that's like uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, but his timing, uh, Debbie Davids was uh, he did the surgery, I think, in 2016 and was making these decisions in uh, starting in about 2011, something like that. So I'm not quite uh, understanding how long he was trolling the internet for these uh, so-called uh, transvestite boards, which means, I guess, chat rooms of cross-dressers. Um, and uh, he does say in that book, uh, porn was one click away, uh, but not interested. Uh, on these sites, uh, it is noted in the book that the post-op so-called transsexuals had higher status. And uh, so it had to do with having enough money. It had to do with... Uh, uh, being <laughs> foolish enough to make that decision um, and allowing yourself to be captured by a woke therapist who wants to put a political diagnosis onto your body. Here is a quote from Hayton in the uh, Times, the Janice Turner article. What you are seeing is an embodiment of how that person, meaning a man, would like the ideal woman to dress. Uh, autogynephilia is a rare window, he says, into male heterosexuality because men usually keep their feelings and porn fantasies strictly under wraps. I wonder what Stephanie thought when she read that. I mean, reportedly she doesn't um, read any of this stuff. She says uh, one activist in the family is enough. Um, Okay, and he also says regarding pornography in the book, porn doesn't cause unusual sexualities, rather it reveals them. And then also regarding AGP, he says it appears to be hardwired, which takes us to the retcon waffles of his childhood. <clears throat> Uh, so at age three, he has this um, remembrance um, of uh, taking his mother's uh, tights. They call them laddered tights. Um, they were uh, they had runs in them, so they were in the bin and the garbage. And at the age of three, he claims he pulled them out and was trying to put them on or something. 
none of this makes much sense. But he um, uses that uh, retconned early memory for the purpose of his diagnosis, for the purpose of the Holy Grail of the letter to give to the surgeon. Um, and, you know, a developmentally trained therapist would say, we have to be very careful about overlaying these kind of interpretations on the earliest childhood memories. Then in a, a later uh, incident, he was in a play where he dressed up as an insect, which in Britain is called a ladybird. We call it a ladybug, beneficial insect that eats aphids. Um, and he was so excited, I guess, of wearing these tights again. Um, and uh, I don't understand why he wouldn't be excited about the wings. I assume that they had some beautiful wings that were, you know, they were supposed to flap or something <laughs> with their hand, with their arms. Uh, so, but he's describing this rush he gets. What drove me was not testosterone, but adrenaline. The mere thought of being a girl gave me a rush. Writing it down in a diary focused it. Um, I doubt that he wrote this at the time as a child. Very few children keep, uh, consistently keep any diaries as children. So he must have written down his memories in the diary. It was probably a, a homework assignment of that therapist who had the chair in the room, <laughs> that if he moved the chair in the middle of the room, that meant he was mo removing all the obstacles to making this decision that he wants these surgeries to change his plumbing system. Um, okay, so he had met, uh, around that time, he met a post-op transsexual um, who had to sit on a donut pillow. But nevertheless, despite this evidence of problems, he felt consumed. That's the word he used, consumed. Um, uh, and he, uh, in the book, says, if everything goes to plan, the surgeon can create an aesthetic functional facsimile of female genitalia. A facsimile is the operative word here. It does not serve the same function at all as the female vaginal and birth canal. It just does not. There is no possibility for tissue from the male penis to be inverted and inserted inside the pelvis of a man and uh, having the functionality of female genitalia. Um, so he does have a serious complication of uh, bladder retention, urine retention, and his bladder became distended, which is pretty dangerous. I think you're going to get sepsis from this. And he went to the A&E. It's called the emergency room here in the States. And it was remedied there. Who knows how many people had to wait with uh, broken bones and children with high fevers while uh, several doctors were hovering over him with his distended bladder. Um, he d recounts a painful dilation and mucky excretions, and he has two different versions of how long it took him to be through the pain. Um, of, uh, I think one, the longer one said six months, um, and functionality since they are celibate one wonders. He says he's not seeking any kind of sexual affairs or anything with men. Um, and I want to point out that in this video that I have linked in the uh, just previous to my most current blog on my WordPress, uh, utahagengrasswidow.wordpress.com, uh, is, um, oh, let's see. Actually, no, it's on my most recent one. It's Call Me Sam, who says, honestly, in the middle of that video that I have linked at the end of my blog, um, he says that when he was fooling around with men, he was pretending to have a female sexual response, and he now regards it as a charade. And I really, really appreciate that honesty. Um, please. Somebody put him in a medical textbook and that story in a medical textbook. Blanchard used 
his case back when he was Maya K to uh, make the, he took two isolated incidents of boys uh, and, or of a boy and then of uh, Maya K to make a claim that there was such a thing called generational transsexualism. Oof. So, uh, okay, so there's this whole thing about passing. It goes on and on and on how they are so concerned about whether they pass. And if you're intending to stay married, I really don't understand who, you know, <laughs> you're not going to pass to your wife. You're not going to pass to your children. They all know that you fathered these children. Anyway, he had a friend watch the people that passed him 20 paces behind him and uh, to note whether they made double takes or frowned or had some kind of negative reaction, and they didn't. So that was uh, Hayton's proof. And I'm asking, is this in Bristol, which is one of the woke centers of Britain? Of course, they're not going to give you a second look unless you're wearing a pirate costume. Um, okay. He says in 2018, I don't tend to get clocked unless I disclose my history. And sometimes people are astonished when I tell them. <laughs> no, you don't pass, really. Everything. Your shoulders, your voice, your hands, your feet, everything. Your torso, your head. No. <laughs> Neither does Nettie. And he's not tall like uh, this Hayton guy. It, uh, okay. So... Uh, he says, it would therefore be odd to describe me as a man. It really doesn't describe the way I relate to other people in life. <laughs> no, you are a man. And you are relating as a man who is trying to dominate every situation that you're in. Uh, his kids call him dad, he says, uh, except in public because they're in Bristol. So, you know, if Stephanie isn't there, do they pretend his children and say, Mum? Or do they just say, Debbie, because everybody knows who Debbie Hayton is? I mean, I don't know. Um, that's gaslighting. It's unfortunate. Um, okay. And then regarding being sent to prison and in 2019, this discussion of males who identify as females being in the female estate and... Um, and he's saying, should that happen, being sent to prison, I would prefer to be accommodated within the female estate. I identify with women. My hormone levels are within the normal female range. And this is just, you're gaslighting yourself. Please watch Sam K at Call Me Sam YouTube channel. Uh, and then he says uh, some statement Debbie Hayton does about... Um, we can't make the requirement for men who identify as women to have had these surgeries in order to get into the female prisons because that would be, he, quote, he says, and this is a quote, enforced castration. He says this with absolutely no sense of irony. Um, and uh, he says detransitioning would cause him a mental health catastrophe. And um, my other uh, detransitioner, male detransitioner, I want to mention <laughs> um, is Ray Williams, who had a recent interview on Benjamin Boyce. He had a pulmonary embolism, which could have caused him death. That is because of the estrogen, and he detransitioned. Um, he had not had surgery, so that's very fortunate. So, you know, <clears throat> call me Sam. Benjamin Boyce, the recent one with Ray Williams, and you will get a real uh, window into how it is to hear the truth. Also, Alexander L. YouTube channel, the Norwegian guy who regrets the surgeries, and Richie Heron, whose channel I think is called Tulip R, Tulip with two L's, capital R, uh, those should be required viewing for all of those therapists who are helping to search for the holy grail of the surgeon letters. Take care. Stay in 
the natural world. <laughs>